Time for some political nuts. There's a new guy in town, and this one doesn't seem to be around. Let's watch. I respect the chair's authority, but the chair... Mr. Holman! You work for me. me. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a taxpayer. You work for me. Mr. Holman, is there anything you'd like to respond to what you've heard today? Yeah, I'd like to respond to Acting Chairman Jay Paul and your comment about the Trump administration moving money around for more detention beds. I'd like to remind you under the Obama administration, we did that most of the years he was president. We moved money around DHS. It's called reprogramming. We did that under the Obama administration. I, didn't, I don't remember any hearings on that. And also, I'd like to remind you that, that under the Obama administration, I mean, you're quick to point out that the cages were built under Obama administration. I was there. Family detention, we had 100 family beds under Obama administration. We built 3,000 more. So when there was a surge in FY14 and FY15 on the border, Congress was quick to give all the money we needed to build detention facilities, get transportation contracts. We reprogrammed money out of the majority of the years he was president. That was fine. Under Obama administration, FY12, we removed 409,000 people, half of what was removed last year. There was no hearings on that. So, I, I, you know, this is about transparency. Let's be, let's be factual about it. The time of the gentleman has expired. Since you did address some comments at me, I'll just say that I didn't like it under the Obama administration either. In fact... Well, be I honest with the American people. You, you can't point out faults in the Trump administration when it happened Mr. under the Obama administration. That's dishonesty. It's pathetic and it's sad. Mr. Holman, I control the time and I am the chairwoman of the committee. Thank you for respecting that. Um, I didn't like it under the Obama administration. And I'll remind you, Mr. Holman, that you also testified before Congress in support of the Obama's Priorities Enforcement Program before the Senate Judiciary Committee on May 19th, 2016, which had a very different approach. Well, can, that, I respo- can I respond that, to that? that? Can I respond I re- to that? No. Of course not. not. And Mr. Holman, I want to give you some time, but I, I do want to ask one uh, a quick question, and I, and I want to make one quick statement. I, I find it very offensive that anybody would compare uh, any federal employee, frankly, to uh, someone who uh, the Gestapo or uh, running Nazi concentration camps. That is very offensive. I have 15 seconds and I yield it to you. Thank you for saying that. I wish somebody in Democratic leadership would say that out loud. Look, you want to know why there's 50,000 people in detention? You want to know why we have a million, million, one million illegal entries in the United States? You want to know why have these issues? Because you have failed to secure the border. You have failed to work with this president to close the three loopholes we've asked for two years to close. Time so if you want to know why this issue expired. exists, you need to look in the mirror. You, need, the you have failed expired. American Mr. people who are not Holman. securing the border and closing loopholes. Mr. Holman, look, please you, respect the chair and the authority you know, of the chair. The time have, of the gentleman has expired. I've asked you gentleman politely to let me go beyond my, my time and you let other people go beyond their gentle- time, but not, not to Tom Holman. He don't get me go have, beyond his time. Mr. Holman, we have this, this approved is a, this is, this is a an agreement this is a between the Republicans and the Democrats with the ranking member. We increased the time of one witness, uh, one uh, member of Congress who was interrupted by a protest. That is done with the approval of the ranking member. Please respect the chair's authority. The I respect woman, the chair's the authority, gen- but the chair... Mr. The, Holman! The, you Excuse work for me. me. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a taxpayer. You work for me. Ms. Holman, again, been one of them days you've sort of yeah, not had time. I appreciate I it. First of all, I, I think everybody needs to be reminded entering this country illegally is a crime. There's no prerequisite you got to commit yet another crime to enforce a law. That's the, that's the law you enacted. A young lady over here mentioned 26 deaths in ICE custody. Wrong. That number's nine. And one's too many. But out of the majority of those nine deaths, which is the lowest in, of any federal and state uh, facility, most of them died within days of detention. It wasn't ICE's fault. They came in ICE's custody in bad condition. So, and, and, and the year before that, majority more heart attacks. I don't know how you, heart attacks happen across this country every day. I don't know how you prevent that. So nine, not 26. And finally, I'll say this, sir. Your comment about me wanting to uh, assault uh, uh, a lawmaker. Let me explain myself to that. Probably not the right thing to say, but I was angry. Let me tell you why you're angry, because you or no one else in this room has seen what I've seen in my 34 years. You didn't stand in the back of a tractor trailer shot my 19 dead aliens that suffocated to death because the smuggler didn't care, including a five-year-old boy. What do you think his last 30 minutes were like? I was there. I seen it, I smelled it, I saw it, and I had a five-year-old boy at the time, and it changed me for the rest of my life. I've seen people who couldn't pay their smuggling fees got stabbed in the face 22 times. 31% of women are being raped crossing this border. Children are dying. Cartels are getting rich. Why am I angry? Because you haven't done anything to fix it. Nothing. 
we've been up here for two years trying to close the three loopholes that Collins said it needs to be closed. And you haven't taken one action. But if there's a policy or initiative that's going to cause an illegal alien to be arrested or be detained or be removed, we're going to have a hearing within days. Within days. But I'm still waiting on a hearing on sanctuary cities because these people's lives have been changed forever. Where's the hearing on sanctuary cities? Where's the hearings? Where's the hearing on the asylum abuse? Where's the hearing on, on the TVPRA so we treat children from Central America better? That's why I'm angry, sir. I know she's not paying attention, but that's why I'm angry, because you have not seen what I've seen, and it affected me in my life. I spent my career trying to save lives. And when I see what's going on in the southern border right now, and you're ignoring it for political reasons, why not have a hearing on that? Why not fix the problem and close the loopholes? Why not? Do, there's no downside in securing our border. There's no downside in illegal immigration being decreased. There's no downside unless drugs come to this country. Opioids, I see enough opioids kill every man, woman, child three times. There's no downside in taking money out of cartel's hands. None. I yield back. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Holman, the actions you took when you were director of ICE were entirely consistent with the law of the land, weren't they? Yes, when someone's prosecuted for a crime, the child can't go to jail with a parent. Yep. That happens to American families every day. Yeah, and if we, as you said, I think earlier, if we don't like the law, last time I checked, it's the folks sitting up here got to change it. Yeah. And you've offered, I think, no more than four times three changes to the law that would help the situation. Is that right? Yes, sir. Maybe make it a fifth time. Can you say it a fifth time for this group? Just, you know, because, again, we're the ones that have to change the law. So give us that recommendation a fifth time, the three things that we got to do. If we would close the loopholes in the TVPRA, where children in Central America are treated the same as children in Mexico, if we would change the Flores Settlement Agreement so we can actually detain families in family settings long enough to see a judge and plead their case, if we can change the rules of asylum so it makes more sense so 90% of the people don't pass the first interview and a lot fewer pass in front of a judge, those three things would, would, would mean a big, would make a big difference on the border and decrease the illegal entry. Because those three things go to the heart of the matter. They go to the incentive. Is that right? They go to incentive along with the other things such as talking about abolishing ICE, having no detention, free education, yeah. free medical care citizenship for those who are here illegally. When you keep offering incentives for people to come to sanctuary cities, come to this country, you'll be protected from ICE. As long as you keep having this language, those kind of more people who those are vulnerable kind of, people are going to keep trying to come. Those kind of statements made by Democrats in the United States Congress or in positions of influence in this country, they have an impact, don't they? They have a significant impact. When a member of Congress says abolish ICE, when another member of Congress says abolish DHS, when the Speaker of the House says walls are immoral, when the person who gave the State of the Union response to the President's State of the Union says she's okay with non-citizens voting, that all has an impact, doesn't it? Just like the laws that you're, you're sworn to uphold and, 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 uh, and uh, impact and do when you're the director of ICE. It has a significant impact, and if this would have been fixed years ago, we probably wouldn't have seen zero tolerance. We wouldn't see the conditions on the border today. But because today. the laws haven't been changed, because of the statements that have been made, there was a crisis. There is a crisis on the border. And that just didn't happen yesterday. No. Right, you think about this. There was a crisis. The administration asks, asks for help. Democrats say it's contrived, it's manufactured, it's fake, it's not real. Then when the crisis, the real crisis gets actually worse, the Democrats blame the administration for the very crisis they helped create by the things they said and the fact it won't change the law. But somehow it's your problem. Somehow it's the president's problem. And we have Ms. Costello who went down there, her team went down there and looked this all over as the inspector general said there's some concerns that she has and the cause of the concerns they're trying to ascertain. Now, she also said agents are doing, I think your, your statement was agents are doing their level best. Is that right, Ms. Costello? That's the ins experience of our inspectors. So the, the inspector general goes down there with your team and you conclude the agents, the people that Mr. Holman used to represent are doing their darn best they can do, but they're overwhelmed. And then you also said in your, in your statement, uh, in your uh, answers a few minutes ago, you're trying to ascertain the cause. Well, that's pretty simple to figure out the cause. It's the numbers. From in October, 60,000 apprehensions and inadmissibles on the border, October of last year. You know what it was in May of this year? 144,000. We know the cause, they're all coming. And they're coming because things the other side's saying and the fact we won't change three fundamental things in the law. And it also might help, Mr. Holman, it also might help 
Because these are the ones that, these are apprehensions, these are people presenting themselves at ports of entry. It also might help if we build a border security wall, right? Instead of having this Speaker of the House say they're immoral, even though there's one in her state, it might actually help if we built the border security wall that the American people voted this president in office to do. It might actually help if we did that. Would you agree, Mr. Holman? Absolutely. Every place they build a border barrier, every single place they build a border barrier, illegal immigration decreased. Yeah, it would, it would help with some of the tragic things that we have heard about tragic situation that we've heard about the last couple of days, this entire week in this committee, that no one wants to see happen. The, the, the young mother who lost her daughter, it's tragic. No one wants those, but if we did the things you're talking about, we could help avoid some of those kind of incidents from happening in the future. Is that right, Mr. Homan? Yeah, if I can respond and to you're that. And you're the guy, you're the guy who has lived it, breathed it, felt it, managed it. You know more than, you, you have more expertise in this area than anyone in this room. Is that right? I believe so, but let me I respond. So. Let me respond to the one child that died. It's tragic, tragic. Sure is. But, but you know, as long as we're showing a lot of pictures, if I can have just thirty seconds, here's a picture. Her name is Serenity. She was nine months years, nine months old, nine months, raped and murdered by an illegal alien because of open borders policy. Here's Irana. She was five years old, raped repeatedly and murdered by an illegal alien. Here's Louise Solowin. She was ninety-three, multiple rapes and murdered by an illegal alien. Here's a 16-year-old. Here's a law enforcement officer. I got hundreds of these in my desk drawer. So I, I've seen tears for people today, and I, I understand that. It's tragic when anybody dies. But let's not remember, let's not forget the angel mom and dads who I've all met and got to know. Their children are dying, and they're separated forever. It's not a matter of location. They're dead. And a secure border would help prevent some of this. Sanctuary cities does not help this. Sanctuary cities, will have, this will increase because of the, the, the push of sanctuary cities, come to our country, we'll protect you. You can even commit a crime, be in our county jail, we're not going to ice into the jail. So he'll go out, recidivism rates, anybody can look him up. 50% reoffend the first year, 70, up to 75 will re, uh, recidivate within five years. They're in the country illegally in violation of federal law. They're, out, they're locked up in a county jail. Let us have access to them and do our job. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe and click that notification bell so you'll know when I make more videos like this. Peace.